there's two things. We have a brand deal and then we have UGC. They are completely different, especially when it comes to pricing them. So we're digging deep, so grab a seat. And even more than that, I actually recommend it because when you're doing UGC, it's completely different. You're not using your audience. You're not posting it on your platform. You can work with other brands that maybe aren't as aligned and wouldn't necessarily like click on your profile. And that's coming from me. My following is small, but I treasure every single person in my audience. So when it comes to a brand deal, if I'm saying yes, it has to be super authentic. It has to be super aligned. It has to be something that my audience is going to love. Like there are so many checks for a brand to actually get all the way down to that, that most of the time, I just kind of rather do a UGC. On UGC, I can do tons of different brands that I personally love, like food, wellness things, even clothing products, which don't necessarily fit in hand in hand with my audience, but it's still things I love and things that if I'm liking them, of course I'll vouch for that brand. And yes, the pricing is very different, but it's not just about the actual monetary value that you're getting. Especially now when we're in a time where every brand needs UGC. Every brand needs it. Whether they know it or not, that's a whole different story, but the brands need it and brands are looking for creators. And if that's something that I love doing, that you love doing, then why not offer that as a service? That's why I think it's so important and so cool that people that automatically know how to create content, people that have experience creating content, of course you can offer it. And even better for the brands because they have someone with experience creating this content for them, which is the pillar. Brands are going to realize that this content generated by real users in different styles of environments, shown in different ways, is a pillar and is necessary for any platform and for growth. But I do have a couple of rules of whether I am deciding to go with UGC or whether that brand is like a qualifying brand to do a brand deal with. Because obviously if I say yes to doing a UGC for a brand that's in my niche, in my industry, it's very different because they are getting something that has taken years to build up. That audience that I've created, where creators can automatically be scrolling, they'll see my face, they'll tie it back to some YouTube video that they saw. Well that brand is winning automatically because they're getting a UGC video and they're being priced at UGC style, yet it's really a brand deal because they're getting my audience with it as well. And the audience doesn't just mean the numerical value, but it's that trust that I've built up throughout the years as I've created content. Now, different things when it comes to the actual pricing of it, when it is a UGC, you have to think about what that person is paying for. If we are going down that route, perpetual rights and different licensing things aren't necessarily something that I do because that's what they're buying. It's like you going to a restaurant, buying something to eat and then them saying, no, but the cooking time that it took us to actually build this plate, that's not included in the price venue. That's something on top. It's like, what are you buying at the end of the day? You're buying that meal, that plate that you want to eat. Same exact thing when it comes to UGC. They're buying that piece of content. So you saying that it doesn't include perpetual rights is basically like, okay, so I'm buying a piece of content, but I have to pay to use it. Then what am I actually buying at the end of the day? But flip the page over to a brand deal and of course you have to add that in. Perpetual rights, white labeling, if they are boosting that content, because of what I mentioned, having that audience, having that trust that you've built up. It's not that number that is shown in the profile, but actually what goes on behind the scenes, the years of work and trust that you've built up. That's why it's so important to include that part in the pricing. And that's where the big, big difference comes in. You can see a UGC video coming out for 100, 200, and then a brand deal with a very similar style of video being over a thousand. From my personal experience, the UGC has always been a much shorter thing to do. And then on the brand deal side, a lot longer, incorporates a lot more things, involves more team members from both sides. That's something to keep in mind because keep in mind that the pricing at the end of the day comes down to time, audience, expertise, 
and that post-production. Of course, that's a whole nother story, but most of the time post-production on a UGC video is a lot shorter than what it is going to be on a long brand deal. So at the end of the day, if you do have that following, it's up to you to decide which one you're going with. There's no right or wrong. There's no, you can do this, but can do this and can't do this, but can do that. Not at all. But they both definitely have their own pros and cons. Oh, and PS, if you haven't already watched it, there's a full series on this right over here.